MLB DFS picks, June 27th, Thursday afternoon slate. We've got six teams going in three games, starting at 340, and then the last closing out at 410. We'll start with Jordan Montgomery. No one wanted to sign him this offseason. Makes a lot of sense. Too bad for Arizona. Wrong move, Arizona. Everything looks bad. 350 expected WOBA to opposing hitters. The skills interactive ERA, 478. Why? Because he's not striking batters out and he's walking batters. Ground ball rate's not bad. Too much hard contact. 571 ERA. That's what happens when you don't strike people out and you don't quite get enough ground balls. And he's facing Minnesota. And Minnesota crushes left-handed pitching. Just 20% K rate, a 176 ISO, 340 Woba, 123 WRC plus. They are hot. They just destroyed Arizona last night. Montgomery did pitch well in his last game, six innings pitched, five strikeouts, but over the season he has not been good, and he has especially struggled with right-handed batters. Should be fine against lefties, but Minnesota has a lot of pop from the right side. If we look at Montgomery versus right-handed batters, 389 Woba allowed, 1.4 home runs per nine. His K minus BB is 6%, so he's walking almost as many as he is striking out. You really don't want to put those Minnesota guys on base. 488 XFIP, 37% hard contact. And you go through Minnesota's lineup, you've got 10 guys that have 100 WRC plus or higher against right-handed pitching. Their Wobas are through the roof. you got to love Minnesota. The only reason that he appears to be a slight favorite at the moment is because we don't have a lot on David Festa. So who is David Festa? He is the number four prospect for the Minnesota Twins. Just a couple seasons, several seasons in the minors, he just went right through, and he's gone right through the system because he's the number four prospect. He's a six-foot-six kid with some high-velocity stuff. Is having a terrific season this year in AAA. 13, what do I got? I believe 13.1 Ks per nine. 377 ERA. I definitely think I have no problem taking a chance there with David Festa. He is going to give you run support, or he's going to get run support, get the win if he's allowed to go long enough. And I imagine they'll let the kid go long enough. He is a top prospect and a very winnable game. Very exciting. Next, Shota Imanaga I was supposed to pitch the other day. He will pitch today. Maybe you are attracted to a matchup against the Giants and a low run total, but I am not, especially not at 10,500. On the season, his stats check out. But it has been a very different story of late, and it's not really the greatest matchup. The Giants versus lefties, 21% K rate, about league average. ISO 154, about league average, not a lot of pop, but the Wobe is 330. WRC plus is 118. And then you look at what Shota did in his last start, 10 earned runs. Now we'll throw an asterisk there because that was a matchup against the Mets. Mets are hot. And the Mets are very good against left-handed pitching, but guess what? So are the Giants. They're good against left-handed pitching. And if we look a little closer at Shota's stats, we will notice that since the end of May, He's allowing 2.5 home runs per nine. His ERA has shot up. Even before his ERA shot up with that 10-run outing, over the last month or so, going back to that May date, 4.43 ERA. So on the year, 2.96 ERA, great. But it's been a different Shota. So maybe it's hitters becoming more familiar with him, more video on the pitcher. Maybe also the Japanese import is hitting a bit of a wall. I don't like it. Jordan Hicks, similar story to Shota. Pretty good numbers on the year, but of late, maybe not the greatest. I like his matchup against the Cubs a lot better. 25% K rate, 140 ISO, 301 Woba, well below league average, 95 WRC plus, again below league average. And the Cubs striking out at a 31% rate over the last week. No power, no Woba, WRC plus is low. Not very good in his last start with just one strikeout. As I mentioned, both these pitchers have kind of struggled of late. Leading up to the end of May, May 25th, Hicks had a 233 ERA. Since that point, over the last month or so, 
a 5.56 ERA. Now his BABIP is 3.58, so that is a little bit of misfortune. And he is a ground ball pitcher with a 52% ground ball rate. So we do expect their BABIPs to be slightly higher. And so that should regress a little bit, but not too much. But he's given up a little bit too much hard contact. He's not completely off the board. Things haven't been going his way. And a lot of those has been his own problems. He's not helping himself with the 9% walk rate on the year. Over this late run, the last month, 4.8 walks per nine, 1.6 home runs per nine. So he's walking batters. He's allowing too much hard contact. He's actually giving up home runs, which we shouldn't expect from a ground ball pitcher. But the matchup isn't terrible. Not something that we're completely on the board with. Now, Chris Sale, of course. I don't really need to explain Chris Sale for you. Great. Andrew Thorpe. Huge favor for Sale because Thorpe's not pitching. Thought he was. So we won't talk about the kid. Although the kid's stats are better than what they've been on the season. We expect him to be part of the Chicago's future. All right, but enough about him because we're going to have Chad Cool. And you're familiar with Cool over the years. Not a lot of strikeouts, too many walks, but a decent ground ball pitcher that just put together some decent back end rotation stats for years with Pittsburgh, goes to Colorado, pitches a lot, but becomes worse, washes out at Washington. Then he ends up with the Charlotte Knights in the White Sox minor leagues. What has he done down there? Same old guy, not striking out batters walking too many, somehow is able to manage a 434 ERA. One of the things that he is doing is limiting home runs, but he's giving up his fair share of hits, 51 and 56 innings, just 42 Ks in those 56 innings, 33 walks in those 56 innings, so 150 FIP or whip. But one thing that he has done well, and is a bit of a, could bring him to life. Now, he's not, you're not going to play him, not in a matchup against Sale. But he does have a 1.9 ground ball to fly ball ratio. So he is doing a probably the best job he's ever done at generating ground balls in his career. Now, that is against minor league pitchers or hitters. But he's more than likely keeping the ball down in the zone. And that's kind of the wrap on Cool. I don't think you're going to pay 8400 in a matchup with Chris Sale for Chad Cool, who you're probably going to go with Chris Sale. And then for me... I'll roll the dice with Festa, and then I may consider Hicks, although, as I mentioned, has not been pitching well of late. And then you're going to want to stack Arizona. You possibly want to stack Atlanta. I like San Francisco a lot, especially if people are thinking Shota is still pitching. Now, Shota could turn it around. He absolutely could. But San Francisco has been good against left-handed bats, and you might get them a little bit more affordable than stacking obviously minnesota or stacking atlanta that'll do it thanks for joining me I'll get you an evening slate coming up rock and roll trip the light fantastic